months and months in music and welcome to kind of a really quick crash course on strum guitar actually for, for kind of absolute beginners and we're gonna real quick we're gonna kind of go through a, a couple things that you would want to practice if you were just starting out and, and 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 go over some things that you should know you know like parts of the guitar you got the big body of the guitar the neck the head you've got the tuners uh, the little white piece at the near the head is called the nut uh, the silver lines are called the frets, and each one's got a number, kind of first fret, second fret, third fret. And you've got fret dots to help you find your way around. So you get, on the side of your guitar, you may have three, five, seven, nine, as far as fret dots go. And then the double dot is always kind of the 12th fret up at the uh, uh, on, on a guitar. Um, and a lot of other instruments, too. Um, then this piece at the bottom is called the bridge. The little white piece that goes on, it's called the saddle. The little pins that go in on the bridge are called the end pins. Um, some guitars have a pick guard, actually a piece of plastic right here that kind of guards against the wood. I do not. Instead, I have this thing that goes around the sound hole called a rosetta. <laughs> um, and then you have the hole where the sound comes out, which is called the sound hole. You've got the things on the sides, which are called the sides. thing on the back, called the back. Uh, this thing right here is called the heel. And the little piece that goes on it for the strap is called the button. You may not have one. Um, if you're playing a classical guitar, or if you just got a guitar offline, then sometimes you have to have somebody install that. And then the piece at the very end where the strap goes on is called the peg. So those are kind of the, the main deal and the, the open strings of the guitar. Um, I have a little memory device to help you remember that. It's kind of every beginning guitarist desires another encore to kind of remember that first string to the sixth string, kind of the skinny one to the thick one. So you got an E string and a B string and a G string and a D string and then an A string and then an E string. And normally the skinny E is called the high E string. And the thickest one is normally called the low E string because of the way it, it sounds. So normally I'm, I confuse people all the time because sometimes I think high and I'm thinking towards the ground because of the sound the high E makes and low sometimes because of the, the low E string. And, and when you're first starting out, actually, you could kind of do some just really easy right hand exercises and just kind of going over these really quick. You can take your pick, for instance, and do just down ups on the E string to kind of get used to doing that. And actually one really cool thing I like to do is kind of relate this to rhythm. So you can do kind of one down up on each string. And that's kind of the sound of something we call eighth notes in music, actually, where you kind of divide your foot tap into two parts. Kind of a down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Or you could kind of work a three feel, kind of a one, two, three, one, two, three. And I'm doing that with the alternate picking, so I'm doing down, up, down and then reversing that for an up, down, up on the high E string. So kind of a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, to kind of feel something called triplets. So you could kind of work one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three on each string. And you can kind of take that idea and expand it as, as far as you want it to. You can kind of try four down ups, kind of a down up, down up, kind of an idea to get four notes. Those are called 16th notes. Or you can even try tra strange ones like fives. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, sixes or sevens or eights or 130 seconds if you want to try something really crazy and then so you want to practice something with your right hand kind of get your right hand moving around um, and then your left hand um, normally your index is number one number two number three number four so what you can do is work little finger combinations and what, what I like to do is start with two finger combinations where you could do like first finger on the first fret on the high E and then go to second finger on the same string kind of a one and two idea it's kind of a cool thing to practice or you could try a one and three, and some of these are stretches, and you may want to play around with with a head angle. Actually, makes the left hand a lot easier if you do a higher head. Normally, I'm not doing that in, in my videos, just so you can see the, the the hand better because I put a lot of titles in these things. Um, but you can kind of work different combinations of fingers, so you you may want to experiment with head angle and where your thumb is. Actually, is kind of the main two things. If you get your thumb closer to your third and fourth finger, a lot of times it'll make it a little bit easier to work bigger stretches. But you could try one and twos a lot, or one and threes, or one and fours, or second finger to third finger is kind of a weird combination, or two to four, or three to four. And what I like doing is taking one combination and just drilling it like crazy. So now um, there's an exercise I call climbing where you kind of take the one and two and try that idea on every string. And that can be a cool thing to do on any fret um, or even kind of weaving up the neck with kind of a combination. Or something else that can be kind of cool is to kind of work that up a string, kind of doing like first fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret, 
these are cool ideas to kind of try and get used to moving around. And I'm kind of sliding my first finger, so I'm not actually lifting one, if you'll notice that. So it's kind of a slide two, slide two, slide one two, slide one two kind of an idea. Or you can come up with all kinds of other ways to kind of work around the neck. Diagonal shifting can be cool. Yeah, so now I'm going up a fret and up a string, kind of an idea. But you could design all kinds of things. And some technical things that normally you'll see in guitar stuff in general um, would be doing like first finger, for instance, and kind of putting down your second finger to kind of get a hammer on sound. Um, or what we call a hammer on sound, where it's an ascending slur kind of deal. So I'm playing the first finger with the pick, and then just putting down two to kind of get the sound to carry. It's almost like a magic trick. Um, or you could play the second finger, for instance, and reverse that combination, and let your finger fall off the string. And sometimes if you think straight towards the ground, that'll help you get more articulation or, or attack um, on that note. And that's called a descending slur, or a pull-off, because you're kind of pulling off the strings. And those ideas work to the open string too. Kind of working just a one finger idea. So you might kind of experiment with that. Or taking those climbing ideas, doing hammer-ons, doing pull-offs. Main idea is to find some ways to kind of move around the guitar where you don't have to worry about what note you're playing necessarily. You're just kind of working just dexterity with the left hand. You know, what is it? How far are the strings apart with the right hand? And then from there, a lot of times, especially in a first lesson, I'll jump into chords so you can go ahead and be playing some songs. So a some really cool chords on the guitar. Uh, one of my favorite chords is G major. And you put your first finger on the A second, second finger on the low E third, third finger on the high E third. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a G major chord that sounds really happy. There's lots of other ways to play G major. You can even put your third finger on the B string third, pinky on the high E third. That might feel a little bit better for you. And then from the G, we'd be going to an E minor chord is another good one to know. So if, you, if you know G, E minor, C, and D, you can play a million songs. But uh, if you do first finger on the A second, second finger on the D second, that sounds an E minor chord, and it sounds really simple. Um, you may also want to think about adding in the third on the B string, third pinky on the high E third, kind of working that for your E minor chord. And then from the E minor, you could work it to a C major chord. And the way you play C major, first finger goes to the B on the first fret, second finger on the D second fret, and third finger on the A string third fret. And if you show them the A string to the high E string, that sounds a C major chord, and it sounds really, really happy. Now while you're on C's in general, it can be kind of cool to lift off the first finger and make that a C major seven, or you could add in the pinky on the B string third, make it a C major nine, and kind of say some things around C's, which can be cool. Or another way to play C major nine, you do first finger on the D second fret, second finger on the A third, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third, and if you show them the A string to the high E string, that sounds a C major 9, and it sounds really, really groovy happy. And then from the C, a good chord to know is D major. And when you play D major, first finger goes to the G string on the second fret, second finger on the high E second fret, and third finger on the B string third fret. And if you show them the D string to the high E string, that sounds a D major, and it sounds really, really happy. Now while you're on D's in general, it can also be cool to lift off the second finger, make that a D suspended second. Or you could add in the pinky on the high E for a D sus and kind of say some things around B chords in general. And it can be kind of cool just to work just that, that one chord progression actually, especially if you're just starting out, kind of that G, E minor, C, B, and I'm kind of doing eight downs on each chord, kind of get some rhythm going on. And I'm adding a little bit of right hand music, so I'm taking the flat of my right hand and actually kind of laying it down almost on top of the saddle to get that almost kind of like a really cool sneaky kind of quality. So you may want to kind of play around with that. Or another strum pattern that, that you'll hear all the time actually in guitar stuff, and one of my favorite ones is down, down, up, up, down, up. So you took the G and just tried that a lot. You'd have down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down. Now randomly that chord progression is very, very close to a song called Stand By Me by Benny King. And so if we were going to kind of try that through through the chord progression, you'd almost have that G, and then we'd have another G, we'd have a two G idea, and then we'd have an E minor, and another E minor, and then a C, and then a D. And then we go back to G twice, at the very, very end, and then we kind of start that over again. So this might be kind of a cool song to work, just to kind of get used to, to doing some rhythm, especially when you're starting out. 
got a couple chords, then the change isn't too hard, and kind of works the flow with the right hand. The tricky part would be kind of seeing the D chord through that progression. So maybe kind of a cool actually in the key of A major, but this is kind of cool because it's an opportunity to go over the two other major chords that you may see on the guitar, um, which was, is an A major chord. Let me play A major. First finger goes the D on the second fret, second finger on the G string, second fret, third finger on the B string, second fret, and if you strum all those together, that sounds an A major chord and it sounds really happy. Now while you're on A's in general, it can also be cool to lift off the third finger and make that an A suspended second. Or you could take the pinky and add it out on the B string third and have an A suspended chord and kind of say some things around A chords. Now the weird part is, another way to play A major is to have something called a bar chord. And I know this can be a little bit tricky, especially if you're just starting out, but I thought it would be a cool thing to go over with this video. And the way you play an A major as a bar chord is you do first finger across the entire fifth fret. And actually one thing you may want to play around with is kind of thumb placement. Something else you could kind of play around with is, and the main thing here is to try and keep your first finger really, really flat. And you may even want to experiment with kind of bringing your other fingers up alongside that first finger. This is something I used to call finger yoga or shadow puppets or you know, it's kind of like that thing you do. Um, but, but it can be a cool exercise to kind of get used to your finger fingers kind of bending next to a, a first finger that doesn't bend. So you may want to play around with that idea um, to kind of get used to doing bars. And so it would be a bar on 5th fret, 2nd finger on the G, second or 6th fret. Third finger on the A seventh, pinky on the D seventh, would kind of be an A major bar chord. So it's really, really cool, but I know that can be really tricky. Trying this on electric is going to be a lot easier than, than on acoustic, no matter what your parents say. Um, so if you start out on the A major, and then from the A, maybe go into an F sharp minor. Normally you do this as kind of a bar two. Um, you'd have a second fret bar, third finger on the A string, fourth fret, pinky on the D string, fourth fret. That sounds an F sharp minor chord, kind of thinking a lot of those same things. It's basically that shape we just had, but now you're lifting off the second finger, which is always a dangerous finger to lift. Um, and then from the F sharp minor, we'd be going to a D major chord, and then we go to an E major chord, and we play E major. First finger goes to the G on the first fret, second finger on the A string, second fret, and third finger on the D string, second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an E major chord, it sounds really, really happy. From the E, we'd be going back to our A major chord. So you could kind of work that idea, actually kind of work in either one of those strum patterns, kind of that A, A, just to get used to doing the bars, F sharp minor, F sharp minor, D major, E major, A major, A major. Now there's a very famous bass line that kind of happens around that, where you could play open E, fourth on the low E, and then fifth on the low E, and then we do that again, kind of over four, five, five, and then we kind of work it on the E string, five, four to two, and then open E, and then back to the two on the low E, and then we do two to open on the E, and then open D twice, and then we go oh, four, two on the D string, and then you go back to the beginning, kind of over four, five, so you can even try that to kind of follow those single notes, kind of like, oh, four, five, five, oh, four, five, 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 four, two, two, oh, two, 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 oh, open D, oh, four, two, two, oh, four, five, five, oh, four, five, five, and it can be even kind of cool to kind of throw in the chord around the bass line two-part idea. So now it sounds a little bit more pro. So you can kind of play around with that too. Now the bar chord's actually that major shape we're talking about for A major, and the minor shape that we're doing for F sharp minor. The note that kind of gets, gives you the name of the chord is on the E string for both of those, those chords. It's kind of a fifth fret on the low E string for an A note, and second fret on the low E is kind of an F sharp note. And actually, there's this thing called a chromatic scale, actually, that, that you may want to practice too, where you could play every single note on the guitar, and actually this would give you a way to play every single major and every single minor chord ever. <laughs> um, so, 
Um, what a chromatic scale is is where you play every single note. The easiest way to do that is kind of take the E string and play up every single fret, and that's called a chromatic scale. And when you get to 12th fret, that's actually where everything starts over again. Like your open E and the E on the 12th fret have the same note name, so they're both E notes, which is why we mark it with two, two dots normally. Um, now, the way notes work in music, though, is you go through the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then after G, you start over again on A. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, kind of an idea. But then we throw in some things called sharps. And what a sharp is, is where you go one fret higher than, than you normally would. So we got to open E, and magically, E's go right to F on the first fret. Then you could slide that over to second fret, and that's an F sharp note. On the third fret, we have a G note. Then if we go over one more fret, we have a G sharp. Then on fifth fret, we have an A. On sixth fret, we have an A sharp. On seventh fret, we have a B. But B is magic, because B magically goes to C. So the magic notes are E's go to F's, B's go to C's. But then C has a C sharp on ninth fret. And then we have tenth fret's a D note. And then eleventh fret's a D sharp note. And then twelfth fret's an E note. So you could kind of work it up that string and just call it those notes. E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. They kind of go over all those note names. Or sometimes in music we use some things called flats, which is where you go in the other way. So E is on 12th fret on the E. But if you went down to 11, another name for D sharp is E flat. <laughs> so you got E on the 12, E flat on the 11, 10th fret still D, now it's D flat. Then you got C, which is magic, because he goes to B. And then we got a B flat on sixth fret, A on fifth fret, A flat on fourth fret, G on third fret, G flat on second fret, F on first fret, and then you're back to E. So it's every note you'll ever see on any instrument, actually. E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. E, E flat, D, D flat, C, D, D flat, A, A flat, G, G flat, F, E. And they always come in that order. Now the cool thing about that A major shape is we're kind of uh, that we're doing as a bar on fifth fret is you've got an A note on the low E string. Well, whatever note you're playing on the E string with that shape, that's what chord it is. So fifth fret's an A, but fourth fret would be an A flat, and third fret would be a G, and second fret would be an F sharp, and first fret would be an F. So you could take that shape and just kind of try moving it around through the chromatic scale to just get used to doing that shape. And you could really do the same thing with the F sharp minor, actually, kind of F sharp minor to G minor to G sharp minor to A major or A minor, A sharp minor, kind of just taking that shape and moving it around. It's a more advanced kind of an idea, but I think that'd be a really, really cool way to kind of work that too. And the cool thing about practicing both of that, actually the stand by me in the key of G, which is where we started, and then practicing it in the key of A, where we ended up, you end up practicing the five major chords that you'll see on the guitar. So actually that C and G and D and A and E are the chords that you'll see all the time in guitar stuff. But that's the basics of how you can kind of work some, some chords through, through Stand By Me, chromatic scales, some basic intro ideas for beginners. So that's my crash course on strum guitar. So good luck.